In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about conscientiousness people and how they experience life. So, now, there's some other things about, about conscientiousness that are pretty interesting. I think they're kind of revolutionarily interesting. So, well, the first thing I told you was that overall, especially for industriousness, we have no theoretical model, no neuropsychological model, no psychological model, and no pharmacological model. I could add to that no animal model. So, that's pretty damn weird because pretty, pretty, almost always when you discover something psychometrically and it's stable, you can start connecting it to other things that you've discovered, like, you know, extroversion is associated with incentive reward, and neuroticism is associated with the anxiety systems, and, you know, stability looks like it's associated with higher levels of serotonin, and openness looks like it's associated with decreased latent inhibition. And, like, we, we, you know, we've got some <clears throat> insight into what's going on at other levels of analysis with regards to these traits. Conscientiousness? No, except for this connection between orderliness and disgust, yes. So is there, like, conscientious animals? Well, that's a good question. Are there conscientious animals? You know, that's a tough one. You might say yes, eh? because sled dogs and that sort of thing, and, and like Australian blue healers, first of all, they're super intelligent, so that is something to take into account. But they also really seem to like to work. But I would say they're probably more enthusiastic than conscientious. You know, because they love to work. They're out there wagging their tail. It's like, that's not what you're doing when you're doing telephone sales, you know. So, yeah. But, like, it's also, it seems like, like, sort of, like, this idea of some kind of value, moral judgment embedded in the idea of conscientiousness. So, I mean, I don't think animals have this kind of, like, moral... Well, it's not obvious. Like, because if you look at chimpanzees, for example, um, the chimpanzees and other primates, they have pretty stable dominance hierarchies. They're actually hereditary. And the, the top primates are pretty rough on the bottom primates. And a lot of it looks like contempt. So, you know, because what else would it be exactly, you know? But by the same token, it's not that easy to generate an animal model of disgust. That's another problem. Well, I mean, you think about dogs, those bloody things, they're not disgusted by anything. You know, they're enthusiastic about lots of things that no, nothing in its right mind should ever be enthusiastic about. So, anyways, okay, okay, so. All right, so overall, if you're conscientious, you're going to be more satisfied with your life, especially as you progress through time, and you're going to be more, more happy. You're going to be happier, which is funny because, of course, happiness is basically extroversion, so you might ask what does that have to do with conscientiousness but what it seems to happen is that because you're conscientious across time your life actually stabilizes and gets better and so even though you might not be more happy you'll be less miserable and I'll tell you if you give people a choice between less miserable and happier they'll take less miserable because it's really painful to be miserable but it, it's only so it's only moderately good to be happy like we have a much bigger capacity for negative emotion than for positive emotion so it's positively related to life satisfaction and happiness, but it's also positively related to depression. Conscientious people are more likely to get depressed now. So there's part of the reason why there might be some variation in conscientiousness. So you might say, well, conscientious people do really well when they're fully employed. But if you fire someone who's conscientious, they do not have a good time of it. Because the judgmental part of their personality starts to wreak havoc with themselves, you know, because their attitude is... If you work hard, you can get ahead, right? And so that's an index. Your success is an index of your moral value, essentially. Well, so then you lose your, your employment. What the hell are you supposed to conclude? Well, you could conclude that the whole system is rotten, but you're very unlikely to do that if you're conscientious because you're sort of a patriotic type and, and you, know, you, you, are, you identify quite strongly with the structure of the system. And plus, you know... Conscientious people are very concerned with justice, and they might think, well, if I'm going to have this attitude towards other people who failed, you know, who are unemployed, let's say, I have to have the same attitude towards me. And so what you see with conscientious people, if they're having, you know, maybe they've got laid off at work, really through absolutely no fault of their own, they are just torn up by it, because one of the things they do that's different, for an unconscientious person, everything is always someone else's fault. 
But for a conscientious person, it's the opposite. Everything is always their fault. Well, the problem, there's an advantage to that, eh? Because if you take responsibility for your situation, then there's a possibility that you'll make whatever changes you can to improve your situation. You know, so even if you're only 10% at fault, <clears throat> if you take responsibility for that, then you can fix that 10% and maybe things will work out better for you. So, you know, there's some advantages to overestimating the degree to which you're at fault. And if you say, well, it's the system, well, <laughs> okay, good, fine, go fix that. Like, it's not going to happen, so it's not a very effective means of coping. But in psychotic depression, for example, which is a very, very extreme form of depression, what you often see is that the depressed person erroneously concludes, it's like a metaphysical conclusion, almost, that their faults are integrally tied to the, you know, to everything that happens that's bad in the world. And so they take on all of the guilt for everything that's gone wrong. And obviously that's, there's a point at which that's a relatively counterproductive conclusion, you know. And especially because often when bad things happen to you in life, there's a random element. And, you know, you can't really treat yourself properly unless you take that random element into account. Now, you can overestimate it, which is what you do if you're under, un, unconscientious, and you could, you could overestimate it if you're unconscientious, and underestimate it if you're conscientious. And there's going to be times when you pay for both of those attitudes. So anyways, conscientious people don't do very well when they're, when they're not doing very well, because they, they, they judge themselves very harshly. <clears throat> and so that's partly what... And it's related to guilt... It's, not, it's a funny thing, because there's an element of guilt that's associated with conscientiousness, too. So, conscientious people feel guilt less often, but they're more sensitive to it. So, and, and then you think, well, that's kind of paradoxical. It's not exactly paradoxical. If you're sensitive to guilt, you might arrange things so that you have nothing to feel guilty about. And that's what conscientious people seem to do. And so, guilt... <coughs> Guilt and shame seem to be emotions that are integrally associated with conscientiousness, and they're kind of difficult to, to disentangle, and, you know, and maybe they're not even really separate things. But shame seems to be something that you feel when you fail, perhaps in the eyes of others, and guilt is something that you feel when you fail according to your own standards. And I know that that's kind of a messy definition, but conscientious people do seem to be more prone to shame and guilt. And those seem to be, in principle mediated by different systems than the systems that mediate anxiety and emotional pain but we don't know what the systems are thanks for watching